What is up guys and welcome back. Right, this video I'm going to show you the locations to all the ICPA tech and this will require you to visit a lot of places in many regions. Now I've done them in the order I best thought um, for you to be able to collect them in one go but I highly recommend getting this weapon as soon as possible because it'll save you a lot of time and effort and resources as well. It's going to be on this guy right here. Um, I mean every time you want to use a, a bow, crossbow or something like that this weapon would come in very handy against single enemies. Um, but we're going to get into that a little bit later when we do the showcase. So the second one's going to be right over here. Again, an area you're going to visit fairly early. And um, it is very, very powerful. At the end of the video, I'll show you, uh, show you the weapon against the Ragers and the Reachers and the Breakers and stuff like that. But um, yeah, we'll get into that in a second. And you actually have to craft the weapon after you've collected all 18 pieces. And in the description, you're going to find a timeline to all the spots where you can collect these guys as well. Now, there is only 18 of these IPC techs, IPCA techs. And uh, once you've crafted the weapon, it doesn't require any reloading. It doesn't require any ammo or anything like that. So it is very, very, very useful. But for me at the moment, have finishing the game on survival and every storyline 100%, um, I pretty much have no use for it except for the reaches. Those are the only ones, again, I'll get into in a, in a couple of minutes. But um, against that enemy, sure, you can offload an entire clip of the RPD into that guy and he still won't die. So it's always going to be on these white-coated uh, uh, Nero checkpoint guys. And this one is going to be fairly soon. I mean, this is one of the checkpoints you'll get to very, very early game, but you won't be able to get to it because your bike will probably be crap. So, I mean, for me, collecting all of these at the end of the game, um, like I mentioned before, is, is not going to have as good a use as it's going to be for you guys to get it as soon as possible, especially with the ambush camps and stuff like that, because any humans against this weapon it's just, are just going to be toast, like literally, because they it, it immobilizes them pretty much, whereas the bigger enemies will still be able to smack you around. Okay, okay so moving on forward, we're going to be still in the Belknap region now, before we're heading down south. That's the Iron Butte Pass checkpoint, but it's within Iron, uh, within Belknap, near the Hot Springs Lake. And I still don't know what decal or anything like that I have received for completing the game on survival mode. I know for a fact that there is a decal, a secret decal that you get, but I've emailed devs, I've emailed many people, I've asked people on the, on the channel, but no one seems to know which decal it is. And I've gone through all the decals I've got, and uh, they're all old ones, so I don't quite know what the issue with that is and maybe it's only going to be released with the update in two days time but uh, that gives me a couple of days now to mess around with the new jurassic world evolution dlc which is the clear sanctuary which i'm very excited to get into it's one of my favorite games definitely right this one you're going to need a car a fairly upgraded bike at least to get across that jump and uh, just do the boost at the correct time and you should get it no problem again going to be on the dearly departed over here the white suited Nero dude. Okay, next up, where we still in looks like Iron Butte to me. Nope, yes it is. This is the Iron Butte Nero checkpoint, the uh, Rogue Tunnel. And from there we're going to head down more to the southwest and grab the other one, which is going to be by the ambush camp. But again, he's going to be chilling on a corpse right here, or a remainder of said corpse maybe. Now, after playing the game, I think I only had two missing. And um, the ones that I missed are fairly sneaky, which you will see in a second. But this one, the ambush camp, is going to be pretty straightforward. Again, you're going to have to do a bit of ramping. And it is useful to hold down the brake before you do it and then uh, release it. But I might have been a bit too far there because, as you can see, my boost almost ran out. I didn't quite make it cleanly at all. But uh, I got across, but that's all that matters. Again, on the normally segmented corpse. And that's when I figured out this game has binoculars. Can you believe it or not? Like third time playing through it. Didn't know they existed, but uh, they cannot. you cannot mark enemies or anything like that that I'm aware of. Right, we are now in the Lost Lake region. Santium Tunnel. And from there, we're going to head up to the Sawmill again as well. Well, not again for the first time. This one is pretty sneaky. This was one of the ones I missed. And there was a fucking landmine right next to me here. Which I actually did roll out of the way, but I thought I'd cut it anyway. Okay, the old sawmill. I visit you again, my old friend. 
but this time there is no horde here to speak of. Smash these guys out on a previous video. Now this is going to be just outside the fence, within a little pond, if you will. And another, I'm not sure if this is actually a Nero dude or if it's just a corpse. It looks like a freaker corpse to me. Although I can't see it very well from here. But on that guy is going to be the tech. Okay, this is just a random Nero research site within the Lost Lake region. Just to the east of Sawmill, the old Sawmill. Again, you're going to need to do some ramping to grab it through here. This time I got the boost just right. Yeah. Head round to the downed chopper as per usual and grab it. So yeah, like I mentioned before, I'd highly recommend going for this these uh, items very early game. You can save so many so much time and so much resources as well. I mean, every time a single enemy came, I would normally use the crossbow. Now I just use ammo because fuck it. But uh, whilst playing the game, I'd use the crossbow every time to try and get a headshot for as little as spendage as possible. But with this weapon, it's sure it's going to save you so much stuff. This one as well. I don't know why I never came to search down here, but um, it doesn't seem like a place I would leave. Uh, yeah, I remember looking at it actually when I was doing the uh, Nero checkpoint. But I uh, didn't end up coming down. Now, if you go straight down to the left, it actually has a tunnel. Ladder leading up to the tunnel. And that's going to be within the uh, checkpoint tunnel there. So you can get a, get behind the guys that are trying to attack you the first time you get there. Okay, Crater Lake, guys. We're going to head to the island within Crater Lake. It's going to be this guy right here. And again, there's going to be a nice down chopper. Plenty of these dudes lying around. And again, if you're only joining us now, there's a description. And in the description, there's going to be a timeline to all the pieces. So cross them off your list, your list as you go. And there is another white dude checkpoint right there. Okay, where are we now? We're still in Crater Lake. We're going to go to the Spruce Lake ambush camp. Just to the right of that is going to be the Spruce Lake near a checkpoint. Now we're actually not going to go within the base over there. We're going to head off to the left. And uh, up on a hill is going to be our next tech. Now in a couple of minutes you will see I tested the weapon on some of the hardcore enemies like Rages and Reachers. And... But I wasn't able to test it on the hardcore humans, as in the armored humans, because those camps are all long gone. But once you get up here, you're going to find the beer pong table. And there's actually quite a few scattered around by Sarah's grave as well, there's one there. And head to the right of that and there's going to be a corpse right here. And grab your tech right there. Okay, now we're going to head to Highway 97. This is going to be the Kemalt College. And this horde actually respawned. I took the horde out and I came back here to do some resource collecting. Because scrap is very scarce near the end of the game of on uh, survival mode. Well, it was for me. And the horde was back here. So I took them all out again and got all the ears for them from them as well. So that was a bonus. We're going to head to one of the Freaker Nests. Which probably was taken out a long time ago. You can use that car very effectively against these guys. But in here again, you're going to find someone who's beside himself, really. And his tech is going to be right on there. Okay, next up, we're going to be at one of my favorite hordes, which is going to be the Pillet Bridge. But it is the Drawbridge Horde that uh, is called on this one. The one that spawned in on top of me when I was searching their little tunnel there. And this is the one I missed as well, right above the tunnel of where the horde sleeps. Or should I say I used to sleep? Right over here. And this is the point I was able to actually craft it. But we're going to show you a couple more locations. And then we're going to get into some of the showcasing of how powerful this weapon can actually be. Okay, this one is not going to be labeled because I've obviously got it before, but just south, southeast of Kemalt College. You're going to have a bit of an island hopping over here. And I think I totally fucked this up as well. Let me see. Yeah, the boost I did way too early. I was going way too slow. So the power of editing, we just fix it. And off we go. And here is the last one that you will probably be collecting. 
depending if you've got it in the same order as I've got it. So we're going to go through a couple of enemies now. Uh, well, we're going to craft it first, as you can see there. I saw the red writing, and I was like, what? But it's crafted, and as you can see, no ammo, and you don't need a reload. It is unlimited weapon, which is pretty damn cool. Okay, we're going to take you through some of the enemies now, starting with the weaker ones and moving to the more hardcore ones. So human-wise, with the raiders, very, very simple. Two little shots with the gun, and she's toast. I couldn't even get her on fire, as you will see with these guys. With, uh, with multiple enemies, they can save each other. But uh, with a single enemy, they're fucked. Then they, they're just going to get on fire very, very, very quickly. As you will see with these guys, they let their buddy get on fire. Catch on fire while you stand there and attack him. Now, what a very effective way of doing this, especially with the Rages and the uh, Breakers, is to connect him with the shot and then activate focus. Doing it the other way around can cause problems. So make sure you connect and then you prolong the connection with the focus. As you can see, I enjoyed watching these guys die like this because I've never seen them react to this weapon before. And it also works on Marauders. Thought I'd throw that in there for the head of it. There <laughs> she goes. Okay, now we're going to do, I think it is a Bleacher. Yeah, the Bleacher is going to be probably twice as powerful as the Freaker. The Swarmer at least. But with this one, it does immobilize him. So it is very effective against random enemies that you come across in the wild that are weak enough to be stunned, if you will, immobilized by this weapon. So pretty damn cool. This is probably why I recommend getting this weapon as soon as you can. As you can see, no reloading required. Pretty cool. Okay, against a pack of wolves, I do not recommend using this weapon against a pack of wolves because they are they're going to save each other, kind of like the humans didn't. But I couldn't resist it because it looks so funny when they're getting shocked. As much as I despise animal cruelty, this is a game and fictional. And watching them getting shocked makes me laugh because it looks like they want to take a crap, as you will see in a couple of seconds. But um, definitely don't use this weapon for the world because, like I mentioned, they will save each other. As you can see there, the tail goes up and it is fairly amusing. But they will help each other, as you can see. But holding it onto them for long enough, again, will make them go woof. And in that, I mean on fire. Toasties, and you can just harvest the meat straight away and probably eat it. Nice fat wolf steak. Okay, the cougar, the same thing. Uh, he's going to hit you, even if you connect him with it. He's powerful enough to not get immobilized. But um, as you can see here, he does get immobilized. But the first time I connected, he didn't. So it is possible. Unfortunately, the beautiful animal is going to be toasted just like that. Okay, next one is the Reacher. Now, the Reachers are my worst enemy because they're so quick. And like I mentioned before, you can offload an entire clip of your special weapon into him and he still won't die. But with this weapon, see, I was still a bit cautious. I wasn't sure if he was going to stop or not. With this weapon, I was able to immobilize him and take him out. And this is why I would love to have had this weapon at a sooner time. Because these guys are so difficult, especially if there's other guys involved, like you're trying to do a horde or there's a screamer, they'll kill you, he'll kill you so quickly. Stay close enough to him and he will be toast. More bounties. Alright, grab your bounty, move on. Next up, we're going to have the breaker. Now, I didn't assume this guy was going to be immobilized by this, because that would defeat the purpose of him being so powerful. So again, not recommended. This battle took over 8 minutes. Because uh, every time he grabbed me, I didn't use the insta-kill. I wanted to see how long it took, or if it was even possible to kill him with the stun gun. But I'm going to skip ahead. As you can see, he's wounded and he is limping a bit. This is after a good eight minutes of shocking. Eventually, he catches on fire as well. So not highly recommended to use this weapon against these bigger guys. As you can see, I was quite happy that I got him down with the weapon in the end. But uh, it was a long, boring battle of me dodging. Now the Rager, <laughs> same, uh, really the same concept as the Breacher, or sorry, the Breaker, is do not use this weapon against them. As you can see, it does have some effect, but with this guy, again, it was about a 14 minute battle. And again, it was just me dodging, so nothing interesting to see. And eventually, got him down worth it, and he didn't even go on fire for me. Although he did go on fire within the battle, but uh, just not at the end. So there we have it guys, unfortunately I couldn't find the, the, the hardcore human enemies like I mentioned with the armor, but uh, give it a bash and see how that works. 
So that's going to bring us to the end, guys. I really hope you're enjoying the content. Tons more stuff on the way. Any questions you have, just ask. Always going to reply. Um, plenty more videos on... I'm going to do some Jurassic World for a bit and then get back into this heavily when the update comes in a couple of days' time. So, guys, I want to say welcome to all my new subscribers and I want to say thanks for watching and I'm going to catch you on the next one.